It is the 19th of November, 2011, and you're listening to Over and Out. Hi there, my name is Stephen Radford, and you are listening to Over and Out. This is the podcast that is the extension to Podfling Radio. This interview is with Andy Lewin. He is the co-founder of Manchester Haunted, along with his wife, Natasha. I've been in Manchester for a little over a year now, and I've only just really got to know them. And it's fantastic. They really are nice people, and they think very strongly about taking the paranormal very seriously. They, they don't have... Uh, anoraks with logos on them. They, they're they not that type of people. They don't just go into houses, run around with a camera and go, whoa, there's a ghost, whoa. I like to know people who are scientifically forward thinking, and a lot of people kind of don't think that, that that's possible in the paranormal, but it's not about looking at things and saying, that's a ghost, that's a spirit, he wants to know this, this, this. No, 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 it's about looking at what is naturally occurring first, and what are the psychological conditions that can actually make people believe that something is happening in their house that is that is believed to be paranormal. But anyway, that's enough from me. You really want to get to the interview because Andy does have some very interesting points. Uh, we could have sat there for days on end. So here it is, this is Andy Lewin of Manchester Haunted. So Andy Lewin, yes, tell us about Manchester Haunted. Yeah, Manchester Haunted. We um, we formed it probably a little over half a decade ago now. Um, it got fueled by events that happened in a house when I met my wife, who's the other co-founder of Manchester Haunted. I moved in with her, and things happened in that house that I'd never experienced in my entire life. And I basically been on a quest to sort of find the answers to things that did happen there, you know. And that's that's how. It started and it sort of spiralled from there, really. That's great. So that was the first house that you lived in together? Uh, or? It was, yeah. Natasha Nes- already lived there and I moved in with her. And um, she was sort of used... I think things have sort of happened to Natasha her entire life. Mm. But not to me. Honestly, if you would have said to me, go, so I would have laughed in your face. <laughs> you to go, seriously, I just did not believe... The, the, the mere concept of it, I would have found laughable. But when I moved into that house... Um, yeah, things went interesting. What was the defining moment that changed your mind? What was that wow moment? Um, as things like this happen, it sort of it it's it was subtle at first, and um, things. The main event that sticks in my mind when it first started was um, being downstairs watching TV, and it was about eleven o'clock at night, and I went to the the the, um, the kitchen. As you walk past the kitchen, you walk past the staircase. I looked up the staircase and I saw Sam, who's Natasha's little boy. He's not little anymore, but he was then. He uh, ran into the room where we kept all the DVDs. Yeah. And I thought, well, what's he doing up this time? So I just ran straight up after him, ran into the room, and there was nobody in the room. And I was like, okay, I, I'm sure, like, maybe, you know, I can talk this now in the, with the benefit of hindsight, but it could have been a car drove past and then lights, you know, your yeah. brain fills in the gaps for your foot. But at the moment I was like, what, what was that? You know, it was quite, it was quite an experience for me and things just started getting worse from there really. Up to the point, I bought Natasha, um, a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, who you have met. That's Elizabeth. Uh, that's Elizabeth downstairs. Yeah, yeah. and um, things went really bad after that. And I don't know why, I don't know what the presence of a dog in that house did something, but things really took a turn for the worse. You know, it was up to the point where you could hear footsteps at night, lights were switching on and off. Um, you'd be sat in the front room. At one point, actually, I had a friend of mine come around called Matt, who's um, he's a humanist, and <laughs> he doesn't believe in anything. And, yeah. um, a good person to bring into that situation. A good situation. person to bring into that situation, yeah, definitely. And we were just in the front room, and the light just in the middle of the room just just sort of appeared and went and he was like what was that and at the point we were used to these things happening so a, a lamp or a light it's like just a light like a ball of light like a ball of light in the middle of the room and then just went okay and it was yeah that's 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 odd yeah that's um, odd it's not it's not something you generally experience in certain if, houses if you're sharing the same experience and you both describe the same thing it, it, it's it certainly makes it more confusing 
that's de- totally definitely how yeah. we could, I can understand if, if it's something that's reflecting through and one mm. person sees something but if, if another person is on the opposite side there well, exactly yeah it was sort of like an L-shaped sofa yeah. situation where I'd be on like one side and he was on the other yeah and you wish you had your camera with you then I wish um, I could get back in that house now um, the, the the actual the, the defining moment that made us leave the house was um, like it all seemed to be centred around the dog for some yeah. reason and when she was very young we used to keep her in a cage so she wouldn't do her, her movements all over the house and um, those would be bowel movements by the way yes yes not any other kind of movement yeah. that's fine not, not, not a concerto or <laughs> oh no no but she is a fine conductor <laughs> <laughs> honestly a Brandenburg concerto she did last year was just it was compelling number two number two of course oh the best it is can go baroque is the best anyway <laughs> off subject <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah we, we were upstairs and we could hear like a lot, a lot of paraphernalia going on downstairs so i checked sam's asleep right okay so i did the cliche grabbing a bat and coming downstairs because i was convinced it was that loud i was convinced there was someone in the house mm-hmm. it wasn't it never been like this before um and as i was walking down the stairs this kitchen light switched off i thought right that's it so i went into the kitchen bat in hand ready to meet my assailant and give him a good smack with this bat and um, there was no one in the kitchen but Elizabeth was just sat in this cage looking at me her ears back and the entire cage was just rattling nothing else just the cage was violently rattling and so I just opened the cage and we in the most manly way possible legged it upstairs and got into bed terrified and a few weeks later we moved house right so it was that quick it was that quick. We it was just sort of. I need. We need to get out. I don't know what's going on. I don't know how to, what to do. Coming from a skeptic as well to begin with. Uh, yeah, like, someone uh, who's still skeptical to this day. To be honest yeah, with you. Yeah, but it's it's a, it's a good, healthy skeptical uh, approach. I yeah, think, yeah. Well, I think you have to be. You to can't be, be like, oh, that didn't happen. Something happened. Something happened. Am I saying it's the spirit of a dead person? No, I couldn't possibly no. say that. But something happened, and I can't explain how it happened. So, you mentioned the the poltergeist activity and a theory that was possibly about energy. From yeah, energy. well, yeah, I got speaking to um, a paranormal. I don't like using expert, even though he does. But you can't be an expert in a field that no, no one knows. Thing. Yeah, no one knows. <laughs> but um, it was uh, to do with Mackenzie poltergeist in uh, Greyfriars Churchyard in Edinburgh. There was um, a homeless man who was uh, roaming, he was trying to find somewhere sheltered for the night, so being in Scotland, it would probably be raining and very cold. And um, he found this mausoleum, um, the door was open, so he just helped himself in. As he walked in, I think he, he lost his footing and he ended up crashing down these stairs and knocking himself out at the bottom. As luck would have it, um, there was um, a security guard just roaming the, the, church, the graveyard, and he saw that the door was open to the mausoleum, so he he entered the mausoleum at the same time this homeless person was waking up now if you can imagine it's pitch black you're not sure where you are and then you're surrounded by dead bodies and coffins in this mausoleum yeah i think he was rightly so terrified so this homeless man just taking stock of his situation just legged it out you know so he's coming up the stairs at the same time the security man was coming down and they both met each other and was terrified each other because obviously the security they man, yeah, they weren't expecting him to be coming up the stairs, running at him. And if you think the security man is coming into a mausoleum, he's going to be creeped out anyway. Yeah. To have a figure running at you as you're walking down a pitch a black dark, place, yeah, yeah. and then with the, and then conversely, this man running up, not expecting someone else to be walking down at him. The the theory is that this sort of meetings of these two people and the actual how terrified it the made release. them, so it released this sort of negative energy, mm-hmm. if you can call it that, and this energy it sort of took a sort of it's it's become like an entity, it's become like a a thing of its its own, and I don't know the best way to explain it, yeah. and this energy might be what has caused this sort of poltergeist activity, which has caused people in you know on this graveyard has gone to the Covenanters prison. I've been knocked out. You know, they've had scratches, bruises. This can't be explained. Yeah, yeah. There's been books written about it and the activities happened in houses that are um, on the actual graveyard. Mm. And it, I just find it compelling. That, And I like the idea that it could be something that we can't explain yet. Science hasn't got, you know, got to that point where we could explain how maybe our energies can create 
sort of living entities, if it will, who's got its yeah. own intelligence. But it's actually a, a part of our own creation. Exactly, you know, um, yeah. and I do, I kind of, I can roll with that. Yeah. I like that idea. I think it is... Um, and does that kind of support the idea that children are more susceptible to, to be able to create this energy themselves? It I mean, could, yeah, it, it could be, especially, you know, like... It's um, speculation, but it's... It is speculation, but you can imagine a, a young girl who's her body's changing, she's going, you know, she's in puberty, getting to that age, you know, it could, it causes so much, you know, you, the, your biology strain. changes, doesn't yeah. it? And you can imagine that sort of creating something, can't you? Yeah. yeah. So as a theory, obviously that's all it is. Mixed in with outside influences, you know, family issues and... Exactly, yeah. Because you, know, you get that feeling when, that, when there's been an argument in a room and you go into that room, you can feel... That's exactly what I was going to say. We moved in to a house um, a few years ago. It was a yew tree house just um, near where we live now. And it felt, in certain rooms, it felt awful. It just yeah. felt like dreadful. Like you just felt down. I was, me and my wife weren't getting along at all. We were sort of really irritating each other, and yeah. you know, and not the sort of stupid irritation as you people do when they live with each other. Real. It was just negative, and so we found out afterwards that the person who owns the house, who we were renting it off, was um, he'd been. He, I think he'd been over to Iraq, and when he come, something happened in Iraq, and it changed him. When he come back, he was moody horrible to people you see you know he'd like he was smacking his kids yeah um he, our neighbor told us that there was one time he was coming down it was like a little bridal way that led to the house and there was a few little cottages up there and this um he was coming up the bridal way and this man um was sort of uh, driving down the, the, the you know seven got in his way it was easier for the man that owned our house we were living in to have reversed but he wouldn't he said no i'm not moving you move and this other man would have had to literally reverse an entire bridal way back to his house for him to get past so he said well i can't you know I, i've got a trailer attached i can't do it and he dragged him out of the car and give him a good walloping i mean that's not the actions of a yeah. of a, a man who's mm. <laughs> mentally stable and is it possible that the state he was in or whatever his experience in iraq is has been left imprinted on that house so when you walk in that house you feel his the negative energies he's left there yeah it's anything is possible i mean it's it's always it's always down to speculation but at the same time it's it's about linking things and, and trying to look at things in a different way and i think yeah, it is yeah, you know there's nothing to suggest that it's it's the spirit of of the dead there's not there's nothing to say that it is i mean people say that they yeah. see see things they see people wearing victorian clothing and, and, and this and that but that i can't i can't even touch with a barge pole i, I don't even know what that is I mean, no well there, there's there's to suggest that like um like they could be recordings of time can't they you just yeah. you know where um the actual fabric of a building the stone the masonry has somehow captured a moment in time that's why there's a place in york when it was witnessed by i think several people that saw a roman legion just walk through a wall yeah but that yeah. could have just been imprinted on the time yeah. but still you know again that's <laughs> A massive speculation. It's, it's, it's a huge, I mean, and, and like you say, there are no experts, but it's all about just discussing openly about what what people think, what, what things are possible, what's not possible. But at the same time, it's gearing it towards a certain logical explanation and, and, and tackling all the environmental, uh, uh, sorry, tackling all the uh, environmental circumstances, the human circumstances, and putting those all out and understanding all those first is is the priority i think well that's it and it seems open now for any guy with an emf reader to go into a place that's haunted and it, it's like it's like a fun pastime now yeah for people to do it's not serious i do take it very seriously you know I, the going from the the emf people think if you get an emf reading and it's quite high then all oh, right there's a ghost next to me that's proof, and no, it's not proof. That could be proof that why people are experiencing what phenomena there because high electromagnetic field uh, can it it can change. You know, it can make you feel that there's something next to you. It can, in some extreme cases, you can hallucinate and see things yeah. with these. But they they don't they're not interested in that. They're interested. I've got an EMF reading. There's a ghost next to me. Let's yeah. speak. So, and they don't see past that they take the same equipment in because they've seen it on the television and they see oh they're, they're reacting to a 5.2 so that obviously means something i yeah. don't even know what that means but <laughs> you know, 
But uh, an EMF, EMF detector is, is used for detecting, uh, it, it's used for a different industry. It is, there's yeah. No, I, don't, I don't think there's such thing as ghost hunting technology. No, no, definitely it's, not. It's all about working with what you've got, what's it, what, what's actually there already, and, and everything else is just that happy coincidence. Yeah, a notepad and pen is all you need. Yeah. Really, you know, we do have like a, a CCTV system that we set up, yeah. but that's only well. There's two reasons that I use it for. Obviously, I can't be in every room. Yeah. At the true. same time, so when I'm focusing on one room and recording with a handheld video, uh -huh. I've got other infrared cameras. Just you know, so if anything does happen, but it has been known. We don't do this anymore, but we used to go to like um, places that are saying, "Oh, well, you know, we're haunted. Come to us. Pay an extortion amount of money." And then, and you know, night, investigate yeah. here all night. That's everywhere now. It is. It's massive industry. But I, I was always aware that okay, if uh, a place is saying we're haunted, would they employ people to sort of make things happen? So I thought if I've got cameras up, I could catch stooges. Yeah, stooges. Yeah, and, and catch know. all the the possible uh, falsehoods that are that are there as well. Yeah, because so. we had yeah. a, we did an investigation at an old theatre in. Um, I think it's Bake Up or Back Up. I think I've gone. We'll go with Bake Up. Who knows? And um, <laughs> we weren't allowed to go in any place of theatre without a member of the, you know, the society with us. Uh, and buttons were going flying around, and stones were flying around, and you know, yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty. I never caught it on camera. I have to hold my hands up, but I'm ninety percent sure it was coming from them, because when I finally did get my own, nothing ever happened. Yeah. You know, so. So yeah, and it's it's a shame because they they are they're making it harder, um, except uh, turning it into an industry where it's a money making industry. It's making researching uh, a lot harder. It and is, making, yeah, it uh, is. It's making a mockery of the possible science that can go behind it. Yeah, I've Rochester Mansion. Um, I've no idea why that should be haunted anyway because it's never been lived in by anyone. But it's seven hundred and fifty pounds plus VAT for the night. Yeah. I mean, it goes to the English Heritage Organization, so you, it's not, you know, you are keeping English Heritage alive, but £750 plus that yeah. for one night, what's that, eight hours in a building? It's ridiculous. It and is. I mean, the, the one thing that I do enjoy about about the uh, the paranormal, it, it's the people who, who work in it. And yeah. I think um, to actually go to an event, to actually meet people, who are doing this? I mean, that to me is more important than actually going to a place and running around with cameras with them. And oh yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd much rather that investigations and events were separate. Definitely, it's when a lot of there's a lot of great event te teams out there, well, yeah. organizations, and um, they don't, they, you know, they say it's an event. Yeah, it is. You know, it's yeah. an event. The public come along. It's not yeah. an investigation because you know you can't have public around on an investigation because if anything happens you can't I, yeah it's 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 someone here i'm sorry <laughs> you know I've seen what I mean? when you've got like a group of 30 people in this one house and they're all kind of going into all the different rooms and i'm thinking well they're, they're and they're all seriously thinking that they're going to look they find something or something's going to happen and yeah. it's actually going to be able to be uh proved there and yeah. and that uh, all the human elements that are surrounding them won't matter well yeah exactly I think it's quite yeah. funny because when I was very naive when I first started doing this oh yeah everybody, but, I think everybody is of course that. yeah and um, we went to because um, I we left the house and then I was obsessed yeah. I mean I wanted to know what had happened so I've got all the literature I could find I was reading I was online like sometimes 12 hours at night all the way through the night just trying to find all the code reading about the occult yeah. I as much as I possibly could and we me and Tasha we went to Edinburgh again we we're kind of obsessed with that city and we went down the Blur Street vaults it was a, an event put on by a, a company and I was terrified before we went down there I had to have a few drinks I thought <laughs> I'm going to get lifted up and chucked around by ghosts and stuff yeah. and, <laughs> it, and we were scared until the lights went off and then I sort of realised that no it's not like that at all it's Dead calm. It's dead quiet. calm. Nothing happened. No, it was quite funny where I was watching. Um, there was like a little hut that had like a, a black bin bag put over this this little hole next to this hut, and we were talking to whatever spirit might be there, 
and the paper ba- the plastic bags were just moving slightly when we talked as if a spirit was answering the questions by moving that bin bag and I was enthralled by this I'm like oh my god so uh, did you die down here and then the bag moved slightly oh my god are you filming this this is incredible I was thinking there was wind coming from behind now it was the most idiotic thing but you're in that environment yeah. it's pitch black it's you know, your imagination takes over as well. Exactly, and I, and I don't think people people should be afraid to admit when they've actually done that. I mean, I, I did that with a recording at home, um, actually, sorry, in the Netherlands, where I, I, I got a voice recorder for the first time, a digital one. Yeah. And I'm not ashamed to, to admit I bought it because I wanted to, to catch EVP. Yeah. And I was just in my room eating chocolate, and I just put it on play, and I was just asking questions to my room, you know, just... For, for whatever and uh, I, I said do you like chocolate <laughs> and um, I played back the recording and I heard this hiss of a yes straight after yeah and um. for several days I thought I had something right but then but luckily I think I think something clicks in where you think oh come on think about it what could have possibly made that noise uh, and it's all about coincidences I remember now what, what was going on my my ex was downstairs washing up. Right. And uh, she had the tap on. Yeah. As soon as you turn the tap off, there's a, a, re- there's a release of yeah. air that goes up the pipes. And it, it created that yes sound. Right. So, and we tested it, we recorded it, and we got it again. So, it, it's, you know, I think that's when I really realized that you've got to stop with the imagination and just really go to debunk and, and prove and make sure that you don't miss anything yeah because nine times out of ten it's going to be something that you well definitely and i think it's, it's human nature to fill in the gaps for you you know it's so easy yeah it's so easy when i was on um an investigation in the sheffield fire and police museum i'll, I'll remember this we were in a room and i was filming with um one of one of our team and um, I just had the viewfinder open on the camera and it shot, it was like sort of lighting up, you know, it was lighting up behind me. And I just peered to the right of me over my shoulder and I saw this man, about seven foot tall, he was wearing like a poncho and his eyes just stirred right into my eyes and I'm telling you, I just panicked, I legged it out. Which, you know, I was very professional of me. And I was down and I was like, I calmed myself down. I thought, right, I've got to go back in that room. I've got to go back in that room. That's right. Yeah. Right. So I tried to, I rational, you know, I got myself calmed down. You know, and then I went back in the room. And when I looked in the corner where I saw the figure, it was a cupboard. There was just a tall cupboard there that had like a, a canvas cover over it. And there was a suitcase on top. And the handle of the suitcase sort of was drooping down. I'm thinking, in, it was very dark. Obviously, the viewfinder was lighting up, but... I looked to the right of me. I'm expecting, I want to see a go. So I'm already in that mindset. Yeah. And then I look, and arguably the suitcase is handled up and down. Look like two eyes. The handle looked like a mouth. Yeah. My brain filled in the gaps for me straight away. And I saw what I wanted to see. I saw a ghost. Yes. And then I ran out. That's what happened. And I was convinced until I went back in that room of what it was. And yeah. then I thought, right, you know, and that's that's human brain for you. Exactly. And I, I, it, it is so easy. And uh, it, it can... Yeah, it, it can make people really believe that they've got something that they haven't done it. And I think mm. it's it's situations where you have a residential, a domestic residential situation with a family, that that's where I'm interested uh, in is, is is going to a family who claim that they have something going well, on. We've done and helping them to yeah. realize that it's not exactly. Well, we've done this several times. I, interestingly, with what we talk about, there was um, we went into this house. And they said they could hear footsteps and there's. There's talking at night and all this. So I spent the night in there. And at one point, I just heard this sort of like, foot, it sounded like footsteps coming yeah. from upstairs. So I ran up there and I'm looking around and I could hear it, but it, I couldn't see anything. And I was like, fantastic, you know, actual evidence here. But when I looked yeah. into it. The word it, evidence makes me laugh. Yeah, evidence <laughs> is fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. And, um, but when I looked into it, what they'd had, they'd had new laminate floorboards put down. But it was like they've not really taken into account that the the central heating. So when the central heating either switches on, all the pipes expand, and it made 
that creaking sound. Yeah. All it was was just expanding, hitting the floorboards as it expanded. And then as it contracted, it made the same sound. Yeah. And that's all it was. But the weird thing is, I got all my evidence, evidence. I got all my data. information. Data. data, let's go with data. Yeah. Data's good. And um, I took it to the family and said, look, this is, this is what it is. This is what the footsteps are. And no, that's not what it is. They weren't happy. They wanted it to be a ghost. They yeah. wanted it. They weren't happy. He was disappointed I'd answered the questions and said that you, I was talking. You robbed them of something that was special. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously. But, I mean, <laughs> they were, all, the, all the, you know, the back and forth talking to these people was all about how scared they are and how they want yeah. rid of it. But yeah. I'd answered the questions and then they were disappointed because they I mean, were convinced that there was something there and then they wanted you to be the solution of getting rid of it rather than actually saying it's not there yeah so it's, it's bizarre how people think it is yeah never underestimate the human being <laughs> yeah we're going to take a quick break and here are some words from our sponsors you unlock this door with the click of a mouse Beyond your screen lies another dimension. A dimension of paranormal events, conventions, and investigations. You're moving into a land of interviews, live chats, and prizes. You've just crossed into ReporterChicks.com. Reporter Chicks, bringing all your favorite haunted locations, events, and faces right to your computer. Join the chicks, Charlie, Buffy, Danny, and Sarah Thursday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the hottest paranormal happenings from coast to coast. Only on ReporterChicks.com. Andy Lowen. Stephen. Welcome back. This is part two. I think we're fascinated about the idea of, um, of how the word expert is assigned to different parts of the field of the paranormal. Yeah, um, definitely. And... I, I like the idea, and I, th I think uh, I don't know if you agree with this. That um, in order for people to be uh, to to have the tag expert, they have to be an expert in something that's real. Yeah, I would say so. And um, like, like we were discussing, um, I've had uh, I've come to face with uh, a few people over people who's got degrees in parapsychology, and somehow their opinion is better than mine because they have this degree in parapsychology, but. I would argue that you've got a degree in something that potentially doesn't exist. Yeah. You know, the psycho you know, they do delve into the psychological aspects of things. There's a which bit of is, the real stuff in it. There is a bit, but how yeah. can you have a degree in something that could not exist? You know, you, yeah. you, you can't you just can't have it. You, you know, you've worked very hard for a degree. And you both you got to show for it, apart from having been highly trained in something that may not exist. This field yeah. is filled with the most antagonistic behaviour I have ever seen. I, like by trade, I'm a musician, and musicians tend to be a little bit backstabby, bitchy. But um, this field is incredible, incredible. The, that you know someone else's views is right you know that that is spirit that is right and you how dare you come across and argue that's an orb that orb that's the, that's the first manifestation of a, of an entity it cannot be moisture it's not dust. how dare you say that to me that's what you get and it's unbelievable we have people calling us like you know we're, oh don't talk to them they don't know what they're on about we know what we're on about we'll come to your house for 200 pound the one thing that stands out about the paranormal is that it's very personal yeah it's a, i mean you're talking about the dead you're talking about something that's a very sensitive subject yes you know uh, everybody has a fear of dying and a lot of people want to be able to say yes there is life after death that there is something after death. we are able to speak to our loved ones that that you know that has to be true as true as the as god exists and jesus christ saved us it's yeah. true um so it's it's a it's a strange thing because um, the, not every other field or subject matter is is that competitive because it doesn't talk about the personal feeling. You're not you're not looking at you and saying your personal feelings are wrong. Yeah, it's it's sensitive. It's, it's a very sensitive, and, and mm -hmm. a lot of people who go into the paranormal are very sensitive people 
who are very emotionally yeah. uh, unable to handle certain things. And they want and they want answers, like you said. They want to believe that this isn't it. It's yeah. the, how could, this can't be it. The, you know, bad things happen to their lives, and yeah. how can this possibly be it? There must be something better after this. Because you can't prove that it doesn't exist, they're safe. Yeah, they're safe in a place where they can say whatever they want to. They can believe in something that doesn't. I mean, I, I if uh, let, let's think of something that's tangible and real. Um, a garden. Dot, a garden. Okay. Um, th- th- because there's a lovely uh, Douglas Adams quote it says, yeah. um, "Can I just look at a, a garden and see that it's beautiful without having to imagine that there's fairies at the bottom of it?" I love that quote. That's very true. Very, that is very true. Very nice. Yeah. Sorry. But um, yeah, no. One time, Paul Hunt, who's a friend of mine, he's he's a spiritualist medium, and we were doing an investigation in this pub. And there, as happens with the poor guy, everyone just starts. He wants to be left alone most of the time. Everyone's like asking him questions. Yeah. The landlord came up to him with a bullet, and said, "Like, what'd you get off that? You know, well, this has been in the pub for you know as long as I've been here, and I, I think it's got something to do." So he felt it, and he looked around the room. He just went, "No, don't get anything. Did you not? You found it outside." And he had, yeah. he just found it outside and brought it back yeah. with him. And I thought that was interesting because he knows my views on it. I'm very skeptical. Yeah. And I'm not sure, you know. And he's he's okay with that, you know what I mean? But he's such a really nice guy. Yeah. It was in the papers ages ago that some woman gave birth to identical quadruple babies, and she's like, "It's a miracle," and I'm like, "It's not." You know, it's like there's yeah. like a one in a sixty-four million chance of it happening. But congratulations, thing, you won the lottery. Exactly, <laughs> but the, you know things that have a one in sixty-four million chance of happening, but it happens all the time. It happens all the time. Yeah, it's weird. But, uh, I think that's why people find the paranormal so fascinating because they can't describe it. They can't just say, "This is what it is." Here it is. I can tell you exactly what that is to that and yeah. why that happens. Because everything is such a mystery, there are so many layers of possibilities that people come up with mm. that it, it, I think it trig- triggers the imagination. It people does. love to imagine so many different possibilities. You know, from poltergeists to... Uh, Elementals? I don't know. Yeah, know, spirits goblins. that are created through don't the elements. Don't move those stones. If you move those stones, we can't build there. <laughs> I, I don't even know why I did the accent. Yeah, it was a good accent, though. You know, I'll go with it. <laughs> I'm convinced. I'm not going to move this song. Did you know Darren Brown? But he did a he did a show <laughs> on Friday. I think so. We're getting crossed here. But um, he put a dog, like this little wooden sculpture of a dog, into this like town in Yorkshire, funnily enough. Yeah. And um, he had a news reporter go around and say, like, do you know about this um, this dog? You know, if you stroke it, it's lucky. You know and and after about a few weeks, there's people talking like, oh, that dog, yeah, been there years. Been there years, it has. But it hadn't, it's only been there a few weeks. But it 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 had, it had took over this town, this fascination. Yeah. They had a lot of camera and people just gone to this dog, stroking it. Yeah, fascinating. It's it? fascinating how things can just grip, you know. And it, it, like you say, it's just all these things encompassing the paranormal. It fascinates people. It fascinates oh, me. You know, if, if it didn't, I wouldn't be spending eight hours sat in pitch blackness hoping something happened, you know. The, the whole blackness thing people mm. only see the uh, the night vision camera they yeah. think it's all green they think it's all about looking at the faces on the camera mm. but it is about sitting there in the dark it is and people forget that part yeah and it can be tediously boring yes <laughs> you know when... that's the truth that's the truth now Andy yeah Come on. Come on, I'm giving you the truth when we do an investigation we'll um, we usually do it in two hour takes you know and then have like a 50 minute break you know just yeah. trying to you need to waken yourself you up. Sharp. but if you're sat in a room that can be quite nice it can be warm it can be comfy it's very dark it's say two in the morning and you're sat in that room for two hours and pretty much nothing is going to happen yes yeah that's the paranormal that's investigating yeah and then That's moving on, chill. moving on when there's nothing there. But well, nothing. After about two, two and a half hours, have a break. And you feel, well, should we go back into the same room? Yeah. Do we go into another room? You know, have we really? Can we seriously say we've investigated that particular place? And you know, 
if you time and money means you can't do things like this but really you, if a place is haunted you'd want to spend an entire night just in the one room yeah. and just to see if anything but slightest thing happens this is what i wonder how how can you be sure that it was that one night that, that nothing happened but another night it does and you're not there how, how i mean it, it that's what makes the whole idea of of paranormal investigation, supernatural investigation, so unpredictable. Yeah, yeah. And as is the data that you receive, if if you get nothing, you move on, you go somewhere else, but then somebody's still having this, this stuff that's going on. Mm. Do you encourage people to, to do their own recordings? Oh, of course, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and send them over to us, and, you know, if, and then I can pick that apart and put it through a few computer programs and see, you know, try and find out what it was and... How confident are you at looking at video footage, for example, of, of something moving on a table and knowing that it was fake? How confident am I am that I'll be able to... That you'll be able to say that it's fake? I'd say I was pretty confident that I could do that. How confident are you to say that it's actually something? Less confident? Yeah. Um, that's a good question. I like that. Um, it, it, it'd be difficult for me to see something and then say that it's paranormal it would be I don't know that's a good question it's tricky isn't it it is I, and it's yeah. not a fear of ridicule it's not a fear of me saying actually I think there's something to this and then someone else finding out that there's something I missed I'm very fair enough well done it's, yeah it's not that it's I think it, there's nothing to be afraid about saying I don't know mm. and, and I think there's everything to be afraid of actually saying yes this is paranormal because I think that's I think that's the problem where people say, "Oh, there's, there's definitely something happening here." Yeah, but I think you hit the nail on the head there. That's brilliant. Instead yeah. of actually just saying, "I don't know," let's let's have, let's take another look. Yeah, it's okay. a, every, all the possible things that I can do. Yeah, I've exhausted, and I don't know what stuff caused yeah. this. But again, you can't take the quantum leap of saying a ghost is pushing that on the table. Yeah, because that's a massive from going from just like a cut moving of of how it looks its own card. To saying a ghost is doing that. Yes. That's just there's because, there's, there's, there's but the, the, light years in between. If you forget forget ghosts completely, forget ghosts and then go back to that idea of natural sciences that there's something else that we don't understand that's yeah. nothing to do with humans, nothing to do with the spirit, nothing to do with manifestations of of, of the afterlife. Mm. That it's actually just something else that we we're not even aware of. But uh, but science. Um, as it's you know, it's fundamental principles find the paranormal laughable. It just doesn't exist. It's crazy people thinking, you know, mentally ill people experiencing things. Yeah. I don't think there's enough great scientists really seriously looking into things. I think people just laugh it off, yeah. and that leaves the doors open for charlatans and would be paranormal enthusiasts who yeah think, enthusiasts who think they're an expert they can corner the, the the market by saying you know whatever they want to say because nobody else is actually going to tell them otherwise yeah there's great people out there like I'd say Steve Parsons he, he did an interview for us and he's currently doing um, a PhD just on um, EVP yeah you know what I mean that's, that's it having that focus on one thing and just saying yeah. exactly you know I, I take it he probably understands what sound waves are Yes, he does very much so. And in fact, if you go on his website, um, I can't remember what it's called now, but there's a link on our website. He does a, um, a dissertation that he's wrote on sound waves. Yeah. And yeah, you know, so I asked him a good question. There was a house that we went to, and um, there were, I don't understand loads about sound waves. I'll hold my hands up. I know because it's just me and Tasha now. I find I have to know. A little about a lot, yeah. And then spread yourself, but exactly. And then I have to contact people who I'd say, uh, you know, very read up on the subject and ask their opinion on things. Yeah. That's it. it. Tends to be my the, the way I prefer to do to do it because I trust them and I find it hard to trust people. So if I trust someone, it's a big thing. It's a big thing personally for me. But there was, a, and I weren't aware of this. There was, a, I know, um, you can get sort of. Um, Sound off ele um, electricity pylons. Yeah. And um, you know, and um, in infrasound 
it off um, these sort of pylons and electricity can give this. But the lady all the, the phenomenon was based around was deaf. And I was sort of like, oh, well, how can this, I don't understand if she's deaf. And and it turned out that the guy said it can still affect her. It's about frequencies and it can still affect her physically, even though she can't yes. hear. Yes. And I just, that blew the doors open for me, which then, Ste- you know. Sound is a physical. Exactly. You know, I always had it as a, that's you hear, but it's not as it's vibrations and, you, yeah. you know, and your, your brain interprets that. And I, that's blown the doors open to a lot of, to explain a lot of phenomena for me. That's fantastic. And that's science. I love science. Love it. Yeah. I actually, but my main. I'm a. I'm a real nerd now. You know. I, I'm happiest when I'm just reading science journals, lying in bed at night now. Great, because that's. I think that's what's missing from so many people who are into this kind of stuff. That they're missing that whole hard edge science. Yeah. Aspect of it, and um, you know, it's great to be able to to walk around with a with a night vision camera. Uh, EVP recorder, as they call it, uh, you know, digital recorder, to have all these different things. Um, but I, I can't say that any of these people have a clue with, with, with what they actually have mm. or what they're actually going to be working with. It's like it's like having all, all the uh, all the ingredients to make a cake, but not understanding what where flour comes from, not understanding yeah. where eggs come Precisely. from. Precisely, absolutely. Good analogy. The, yeah. About you know, you get when we. have done events like not never with Manchester Hunter, but we help people out who do do events you know yeah. uh, just as a general courtesy to people who I do respect I've been in a room with a guy who's had a temperature gun um you know we suddenly gone in this room it's cold and now it's getting warmer oh my god can you see this it's getting warmer I'm thinking well, yeah we've there's about four people in this room now it's bound to get warmer <laughs> you know what I mean but you don't want to take away they're having an experience and they're there for an event yeah a sort of taster and Am I am I saying well we're all in a room and we're bound to heat the room up and that's why the temperature's rising? Yeah, is that wrong of me to like then point I, out them? There's so, a there's a moral obligation maybe I think that people are afraid to pop people's bubble. Yeah, and, and sometimes you know, ignorance can be bliss. But if someone is is been, <laughs> been been to a medium and they say that they've had they've had a they had a message from someone who was their loved one. Yeah, you don't want to take that away from them. No, absolutely not. Um, and I, that's a good thing. I think mediums can be a good thing in that respect. As long as if they it made, if long, yeah, as long yeah. if they, if someone's going on who's lost someone who, who's dear to them, and they go to this person, and this person says, "Look, they're happy now. They've moved on. They're in another plane of existence, and they are so they're happy. You know, they just want you to be happy, and they can go away relieved and feel right now. I can carry on with my life and never have to worry." That's I know. What you call okay. A beautiful lie. Yeah. And yeah. There's there's nothing wrong with a beautiful lie, uh, but to deliver a positive message, uh, um, you know, I I think that's that's a harmless way of, of of helping people. I think yeah, I agree. I do agree with your with your philosophy also of of if if you don't know everything, it's not you can't be afraid to not know something. That's what other people out there are for. What I, I've tried to do is sort of immerse myself with people who are better than me, and I learn off them. I do that in my professional life, and you know, and things I'm interested in. Yeah. And other people will not stand the fact that someone is better than them. I'm not yeah. trying to say I'm better than them either. I'm not saying that other people, you know, but it's. But you have your good moments. Yeah, yeah I'd like to, I'd like to <laughs> think so. Well, thank you very much, Andy Lewin. Of Manchester haunted. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. I have a feeling that we're probably going to be talking to Andy uh, on more than one occasion. So this is an introduction to Andy Lewin. Please check out ManchesterHaunted.com. That's all in one word, I believe. Lowercase. It is all lowercase. And uh, check out. They've got some great articles. They've got some interesting interviews as well. <clears throat> yeah, there was one fantastic interview we did. What's his name? St- Stephen Rutherford. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, check out. <laughs> what the hell? We've no problem starting it. It's ending it. That's the problem. And do you know what? Starting it, ending it, always hell. Yeah. Always hell. <laughs> uh, so we're just going to sign off now. And we're going to go and, and walk out of this room with red face, our heads <laughs> hanging in shame. Thank you very much, Andy. Thank you it's very much. It's been a pleasure. I'll speak to you soon. Until next time.